Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did anyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. All right, once again, I've said this before, there's no human being I'd rather have on right now than Zach Frangillo. Uh, director of entertainment for the Savannah Bananas. Um, third time, Zach. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate uh, all that you do. And uh, thank you. So just thank you. Well, thank you. It's It's been awesome. Third time's a charm. It's been, it's been great. I, I love coming on and sharing the good word of banana ball. Well, the good thing is that we actually met, we actually met in person. Uh, it's about basically. time. About time. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's it's in this in this day especially with you guys i mean you guys are all over the place and um i mean we were just talking I mean, you're in vegas now you were just in nashville right nashville so, yeah the the team was i was not uh i stayed back and launched the party animals uh they had their they started their headlining tour here in savannah okay and so, uh i stayed back and made sure that uh this whole new show that we created for the party animals um you know, got off without a hitch and, and made sure that, um, you know, we're, we're launching this brand the way we want to, because those first few games are are so crucially important. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there was a lot to get into here, but you know, one of the things I, I'm glad that this is the first time I've got a chance to talk to you after the Fenway park game, which is the first time that I got a chance to see everything in person. Uh, we had talked a, a, a couple different times leading into it. You know, I was going off of, what I knew and now yeah. I know a whole lot more. Now I get to experience it. And one of the things is, is Zach, is that there's so much to to pick through here about how you guys do things and how you've done things and, and, and really the dynamic, especially at Fenway park, but you had mentioned the party animals. This is the party animals. I saw a lot of party animals gear at Fenway. Like that's the thing. Like we don't seeing, and I know that nobody's comparing the two, but even though some do, but the Globetrotters Washington yep. Generals thing, nobody is wearing Washington Generals gear. And, Correct. and party animals are are, are are a thing. And that of course people don't know that's a team in this case, the Savannah Bananas were playing. Um and uh just as uh, I mean equally as talented, unbelievable yep. stunts and and endeavors and everything else. But that dynamic, I think people don't get. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a, it's a, it's a unique one for sure. Like you said, you know, we do get compared to the Globetrotters a lot, which is, you know, a compliment in and of itself. But that, that main difference of just not having a fixed game with, with being baseball, it's just incredibly difficult to do. Um, But yeah, the party animals, man, they, they have gone into cities and taken over cities. For example, Las Vegas last year, um, which is why this is the first place that they're going on their own headlining tour. Um, that the, the city turned pink. Like it was by the end of that, that weekend in, in Vegas last year, there were definitely more party animal fans than there were banana fans. Um, and we've seen it a couple times and it, it's because, you know, certain people in certain places connect more with that brand and that's okay. And people like to cheer for the bad guys. That is, it is just part of, you know, human nature. And so seeing them launch and be successful um, and also just being incredible ball players has been really cool to see. And it's uh, it's the future of what we're doing. And that's why it's so exciting for, for where we are right now. I mean, they won Fenway. They, they beat four, they beat the bananas four to one. And so like that, that should put a nail in any sort of uh, the game is fixed conversation, but, but no, they won the tour last year. They won Fenway. Um, they are, they are very, very good in their show that we've created is completely different. Uh, and we always keep saying, we come back to this is the greatest party in sports. The bananas is the greatest show in sports and the party animals are the greatest party in sports. And so getting to, to experience that and create that has been, uh, has been really, really exciting. So, um, so you talk about Fenway, let's talk about it. Yeah. What was it, what you thought it would, there was, I mean, you guys were running around. I saw it. It was, it was unbelievable. And in case people don't understand, and this is one of the things that I think that it struck me is that, 
you know, two hours before, whatever it is, you yeah. walk into this major league stadium, this place where I've walked into every single day for, you know, entire season. And it is completely different. You have the banana stuff all over the place. You took over, you took over where I park, <laughs> my parking lot, and it's all, it's all merch. It's all, and people are there. Uh, and then what's really striking is how people are in the park an hour before the game, an hour before the game. And there it's, it's the show before the show and everyone yeah. is into it from the get go. So, but I saw you running around. I just want to, my first question is how did everything go from your end? Man, it was awesome. I think this was one of our biggest tests in our, in our history. Um, you know, not only just from the show aspect, but the, uh, you know, the ticketing aspect, you know, we completely changed our system from, from day one to where we are now, we've always been general admission and, you know, it's first come first serve on seats. And what that had done is gotten people there early. Like you said, if you want the best seat, you get there early. But this one being reserved seats was one of our biggest tests. Are people still going to show up early? Are they going to, you know, in Major League Baseball, a lot of the teams are saying, you know, the majority of our, our, our seats, they're not getting filled until after the first pitch. And so that was one of our biggest fears of like, are people going to get there early? to to start the gate to, to open the gates you know it was a full house at 5 25 when we started walking towards that that stage to open up the gates and to see that was super reassuring for one but it was uh that was one of those moments where it's like all right we're here and it's time to time to go uh and then the the next biggest test was how are we going to be able to do what we do on this field you know um dave meller the, the ground head groundskeeper there he is about as protective as they get and, and i mm -hmm. understand why I mean, it is sacred, sacred ground that we're playing on. And, you know, usually when we play in these cities, it's like they're in the middle of a city. It's minor league baseball. It's not as as vital. But, you know, Dave sent, said something that was, you know, it, it, it's something that was in the back of the mind, but you don't really think about it until you're there. I mean, the Red Sox played on Tuesday, right? They played on Tuesday, the weekend after we're there. And, you know, we can't just walk in there and, you know, tear up the grass or anything like that. It's just not enough time. So the, the Red Sox are in the middle of a season and that's a, that's a, you know, million dollar player that's playing shortstop. And if there's a bad hop because we ripped up the grass a little bit, that's bad news for Dave. And so being able to accomplish what we want to accomplish while also respecting the fact that, you know, the Red Sox are in the middle of a season. When we played in Houston, the next day, they completely changed their entire turf. Like they they had college tournaments that were happening before us. And then we came in and then they just completely redid the field. And so obviously they weren't as concerned, but with, with being in the middle of the season, we needed to make adjustments to uh, make sure that one, the field stayed nice, but then also um, we're still doing a banana show because it's not a banana show. If you don't have dancing in the infield, it's not a banana show. If you don't have our dancing first base coach Maceo, it's not a banana show. If you don't have um, some sort of special effect happening, it's not a banana show. If you know, there's not crazy stuff happening all over the place. And so being able to be authentic, but then also uh, respecting what is happening in the future at Fenway Park was one of those big tests. And I think we accomplished it very, very well. And um, I think Dave is happy with how everything happened and, and we were able to uh, to work together. And, and man, he, he does a great job over there. And um, being able to play on that surface and leaving being like, yes, we did a good job was really, really exciting for me personally. <laughs> well, so um, besides Dave Meller and the grounds crew, in the, in that dynamic, what is the thing that surprised you? And it could be for the, for the better, you know, it's like you, yeah. you envision this moment. I mean, I think last time you were on, we envisioned the moment yeah. Fenway park. What was the thing that surprised you? Um, or maybe there wasn't anything. It, it doesn't, I mean, you guys are pretty prepared. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think n nothing. I, I think the whole experience just in general was, I don't want to say it was a surprising, you know, we did, months and months and months of work. I mean, uh, Patrick Bridey, our, our world tour director and Tara Whitten, our uh, world tour coordinator. I mean, they put in hours and hours and hours of work and research and, you know, site visit after site visit. I think we went to Fenway three or four times just to make sure that we were ready to go and ready for this. Um, but the work that they put in truly made it so that it, there wasn't any big surprises or any big shocks. Um, but I think the fact that 
a traditional baseball market being Boston and being the Red Sox, we were able to, um, you know, see them have a little bit more fun and have a little bit more fun and not be, um, I don't want to say as serious because obviously it's just as serious, but like the, the difference between this isn't a Red Sox crowd. This is a bananas crowd. Um, and it was actually really funny because we'd have fans. We had fans in our K club, which is like some of our biggest bananas fans. They didn't know what the green monster was. And so it's like, okay, as a baseball fan, you kind of have to take a step back. It's like, that's sacred ground for, for us as baseball fans for, for years and years. But for them, it's it's new. This is new. And so, um, you know, just kind of seeing the the combination of the two, the classic baseball fans and the people that have started following just because of the bananas come together and have a, a good night together was was pretty special. By the way, it's it's listen, you've you've done a lot of great things in your life. You've you've. But to as we were standing there on the field, you said, OK, I think it's time to turn the lights on at Fenway Park. <laughs> that's a lot of power <laughs> it is it is yeah. it is it's 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 very powerful and, and there's a certain point where it's like it kind of we kind of go through phases of like all right the ticket team has their time to shine from you know from two o'clock when we open up the streets all the way until 4 30 and then we open up the gates at 4 30 and it's like you, it, it genuinely was it was dark it was dark on the field i mean there was yeah, you, you, and you're, you have to you have to put your fandom as, i gotta i gotta i got my response i gotta do my thing i gotta do my thing the lights are turn the lights on and we turned them on and man once it turned on it felt like the, the clouds opened up and it was ready to go and uh it, it was great could you tell the players the, the players are great i mean the, the players were great with the fans the players obviously were great in the field could you tell this because this is next level for them, right? For a lot of these guys, they're baseball players, and to to play baseball at Fenway Park is something. Could you tell there was a maybe a, even a little bit different vibe and like there being in awe of everything? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it was a dream for a lot of those guys. I mean, you don't have to be a Red Sox fan to dream of playing at Fenway Park. And I think we saw a lot of that. Um, there's definitely a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, tightness when it came into the beginning of the game. Of just, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at all these people and we're at Fenway Park and this is a dream come true. Uh, but by that second, third inning started to settle in and, and remember that, you know, it's still 90, 90 feet to first base. It's 90 feet to second, 90 to third and 90 home. So uh, that that was pretty cool to see. Did it feel for, for you guys, you, you talked about the players, once you get out there, it's the same. Once you got going in the rhythm of doing the show, did it, did that was the same thing for you guys? Did this feel okay? You know, we know how to do this. Doesn't yeah. matter if we have thirty seven thousand. Doesn't matter if Fenway Park, whatever. This is right. the show. We're gonna put it on like we know. Yeah, it, it, it definitely. I mean, for a lot of our people, it, it it you can have that, but on our entertainment side, for us, we had to go into it saying game forty eight. You know, we couldn't go in there being like, oh, my gosh, it's Fenway Park with all these people that we need to make. Like we had to go into it thinking this this is just an, not just another game, but just we have to do everything in our power to make sure that we provide the best experience for our fans. And that's what we go into every game like doesn't matter if there's 10,000, 5,000 in Savannah or 37,000 at, at Fenway Park. We have one job to do, and that is to entertain always. And so we do have a pretty bad habit of overloading our uh, our script sometimes when it comes to those big moments. And we do have to remember that we're fighting a clock. Um, and so there was definitely a little bit of a, a tight string when it came to the end of the game. I think we started that ninth inning with like 28 <laughs> seconds left. So, um, you know, at least we got the nine innings in, which is always our, our number one priority. Uh, but, you know, we definitely did a lot of stuff that um, that that was uh Tough to handle. Tough to handle for sure. I think one of the things is, and I'm going to come back to me being there for the first time and me having friends and, and family there for the first time and, and fans that I know is that is that it really is. It is one of these things where you're engaged throughout the whole thing. And this is what baseball's starving for, right? The sense of urgency. But there are. Yeah. We talked about it. People are engaged in the entire packed house is engaged an hour before the game. Yep. They're there to the very last minute of the game. They're engaged the entire time. Um, and and also, as you said, the demographic, if if we've talked about this before, about this, you know, this is the gateway for the de baseball for the demographic, but it and go to that game. Like you, it's true. It's yeah. true. 
It used to be, honestly, Zach, it used to be the locally, it was like the Lowell Spinners minor league team, single A. Oh, they got a boom bounce in left field. Isn't that great? We'll take a kick. This is yeah. this is this is helping the game in ways that we just there hasn't been an avenue to help before. And I saw that firsthand. Yeah, and and I think we always talk about everybody that walks through our doors can relate to someone, you know, even even grandparents with our banana nanas being there. <laughs> uh, you know, like it's it's any anybody that walks through our doors can feel at home in some way, shape, or form. And and that's something that's pretty special to us. What is so for you, what was the coolest moment? Or you can give a couple coolest moments if you want. Man. Um and maybe maybe it was something that happened in the game. Maybe it's something that happened before the game. Maybe it had something that happened at the end of the game or after the game. Yeah. I mean, I think it was it was honestly just sitting at dinner that night afterwards. You know, we all we all eat in um inside the stadiums, no matter where we go, we'll just like have dinners in one of their club spaces. And sitting there, uh, you know. 11 30 at night after we're all done packed up ready to go to the next city and just sitting there looking out at Fenway Park with just like the the tarp on and the lights on off you know that was that was pretty special of just like uh holy cow we did it and everybody around just you know celebrating having having drinks getting their dinner and just everybody being kind of on that cloud nine and just kind of being able to sit there in silence for a minute and uh, comprehend what we were able to do uh it's pretty rare that we get to do that you know we're always usually moving from one thing to the next but mm. uh, taking that step back and and getting uh, looking at it from a bird's eye view of just and literally a bird's eye view of like this place was packed and we were able to create some pretty special moments for people speaking of special moments you know obviously in social media after people are really happy like they're yeah because again like you you said it we're immersed in major league baseball. It's, it's just, it's, I can tell you, even, even go to like the people coming into the park, it's people are coming in in the third inning. It's like, okay, it is what it is. But after the fact, were you, were you, I don't want to say surprised, but it must've been a good feeling to see the reaction. Like I saw, I, on social media, I saw a ton of reaction from people who I yeah. know and I follow them, but that's, that's also like the pat on the back, the attaboy that, you don't necessarily need, but yeah. it's sure nice to have. Yeah, absolutely. Immediate gratification, you know, and just, uh, you know, being able to watch this thing grow from 2021 to now uh, and, and believing you know, in, in it, because it's it's one thing to see and be a part of, but to genuinely and truly believe in what we are doing from one city world tour in Mobile, Alabama, to where we are now, to see that growth and to believe in it by every step from every hardship all the way through. Um, it is, it was definitely gratifying. And to see people again on social media, just exactly like you said, you know, complimenting the work and, um, you know, people that are true baseball fans saying this is good for the game uh, was pretty special and pretty good. Now you move on, you've already moved on to Nashville, you move on to Vegas and you're moving on to the world tour. What is, do you, did this give you the sort of the jumper? Like, I can't imagine what the, you know, the exhaustion and yeah. the travel and everything else, but something like that must give you sort of a little bit of the jumper cables. Cause like you said, you've been going at it a couple of years now and, right. and it's, it's one thing to get the, Hey, look, we had Papelbon or we had whoever Jake PV yep. on. And that's, that's great. You get the bump, but we all need like a thing along the way that sort of gives yeah. us the jumper cables. Did that, as we sit here right now, did that, I hope that gave you something. I mean, I hope you feel good. <laughs> I definitely feel good. I, I I don't really have a problem with the travel or anything like that, but I will say um, it it didn't. Um, and, and the reason being is we, when we look at the month of June and what we've done, we've launched three teams in three weeks. And then, so we launched our firefighters brand the week before Fenway. Um, and so getting them off the ground and having their first games um, against the bananas at, at home, and having that ability to launch them and make sure that they're up to speed to banana ball the next week being Fenway, which is arguably our biggest game in our franchise's history. And then the week after having the party animals go on their headlining tour for the first time ever, it, it, there wasn't really much time to sit back and, and enjoy it. Um, it, it was truly like, all right, you know, we have, you know, six days to get uh, ready from firefighters opening to Fenway Park. And then we have five days to go from Fenway Park to making sure this party animal brand is launched correctly. Um, now that all of that has all happened in, in that three week span to start to, I don't want to say 
drop down, but you know, two games in Vegas this week and we're not split up, you know, we have uh, a full week to truly like build this and make sure that it's ready to go for Vegas this week. Um, we're starting to have a little bit more of that. Like let's reflect on what we've been able to accomplish over the past few weeks. Um, and, and enjoy it for one, but then to understand like, all right, after this, we have another split where we go to Indianapolis for with the bananas and then the party animals and firefighters are staying home in Savannah. And then after that, we have DC in two weeks after that. So it's like, we have, we have a little bit of this dip to where we can be like, all right, let's enjoy this. But then we're right back to it right after that, after this week. So listen, I mean, it's, it's you, everybody involved. I saw how hard everyone works, the social media team, everything. And yeah. I felt like I contributed because I took a picture of a couple guys, um, one of the one of the um, party animals and one of the bananas, and they were standing on top of the wall, left field wall. Yep. And the image, the, the way that I had it angled, people legitimately thought they were standing on the edge of the wall, but they're actually <laughs> standing on the, like the last yep. row. Yep. But it was such a, it was just so awesome, and it, it was so awesome to see these guys because. Yeah, they're doing their thing and they're going the crowd and they're taking the selfie. But you know, for these guys, like when in their lives, when they started playing baseball, were they going to be able to stand up on the left field wall at Fenway and not get kicked that? out? So, <laughs> yeah, it's my gift. And literally so. not get kicked out of the ballpark for standing on yeah. the top wall. No, yeah, I mean, it definitely, especially those two guys. I mean, that's Bill, Bill Leroy and Tanner Thomas. Bill um, has obviously been here for. Oh shoot. Seven years now is his seventh year or eighth year. I don't even know at this point. He's been here a long time. He's been here since college. Um, and then Tanner who, um, has seen this thing grow since year one of, of the party animals, you know, he's, he's been a party animal. He's been a banana. So to, to have those two guys get to have that moment, uh, mm. there's nothing better for those two guys. Well, I thought, I hope you get some good photos too. I hope you got a good you know, some I good did. Team. I did. I got some, I got some good content myself. Um, still waiting on a couple of them, but just, you know, having, um, you know, we used to do, we did the ESPN plus documentary, uh, of banana land and then season two, which was on our, our YouTube, um, that team came out and was able to record a lot of content and, um, shoot what this was. And, um, I'm excited to see what they do with it. And then obviously just personal stuff, just being able to walk around and, uh, I wasn't, I told myself I wasn't going to do anything until after the game. Cause I needed to like, I didn't want to get too into it until after the game had, uh, had ended. And so after the game ended, you know, being able to take a couple laps and truly take it in was, was special. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you and your team, everybody for breathing life into the great game of baseball in the city of Boston and, and all the cities that you're going to, I said it before, but I just want to reiterate it. Um, it gives me the opportunity to once again meet you in person, yep. see the game, see the see the event in person, and and just you know just sing from the mountaintops. Everybody, everybody should understand how not only how awesome it is, Zach, but how important it is. It really is important. Like I look, that's one of the things I walked around the the crowd, and it's like that. This is important. This is important for these kids, like more yeah. than anything, to, to yeah. digest this. We love it. We love it. And we're, we're happy to, to be a part of it. And like we keep saying, we're just getting started. You know, this is not like a end of the year and we're done. It's, it's, this is just the, the, the very, very beginning of what this, uh, what this thing can be. So. Well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Of course. We'll talk soon.